chapter three, video one. We're going to start a, this is going to be a little bit of a longer of a chapter compared to our first two chapters. Uh, the theme of chapter three will be linear regression. You might have done it maybe previously in an algebra class and have done the line of best fit. We're going to be doing some of that in here. But first, we are going to start off with something called scatter plots. And maybe you've done this before, again, in an Algebra 1 class, perhaps. So back in Chapter 1, we had two different types of data. We had categorical and we had quantitative. Quantitative was our really our numerical data that made sense to do math with, to find an average. And categorical was typically not numerical data, but sometimes it could be. And so when we had, or when we had quantitative data, uh, we had a variety of ways to graph. Uh, we could use dot plots and box plots and stem plots and histograms to do that one quantitative variable. But now we're going to go to two quantitative variables. And essentially, you're going to be graphing points like you did really in Algebra 1. Uh, but we're going to be looking for particular patterns that happen with two variables. Uh, and so the great theologian and philosopher Mace, you might know him, he was one of Biggie Smalls' friends and P. Diddy's friends and whatever other names P. Diddy went by, uh, but he once said in a famous uh, theological song that the more money you come across, the more problems you see. And so we can see that in this scatter plot that as money increases, problems also tend to increase as well. So thank you, Mace, for those wise words of wisdom. Now, our two quantitative variables, one of them is going to be called the explanatory variable, and the other one's going to be called the response variable. The explanatory variable is kind of like the, the first thing that must happen in the problem. And so I've got by definition here, it's the variable used to cause a change in another variable. And what is the other variable? It's the response variable. So the response variable is, by definition, the variable used to measure an effect from the explanatory variable. So the explanatory is what happens first, typically. The response is what you can measure as an effect from the cause. So notice here I bolded the words cause and effect. Cause is the root. The effect is the kind of the after. So cause, effect, before, and after type of changes here. So you can think of explanatory and response is what we're going to be looking at, and cause and effect. Uh, but if you kind of think back to your Algebra 1 days, you always had an independent variable, and there was a dependent variable that depended on some independent variable. And we're going to tie this into graphing. So our explanatory variable, the thing that causes things to happen, the independent variable that has free reign to change values, uh, is really going to be the x whenever we graph. It's going to be on our x-axis. And then our response variable, the thing that comes as the effect from the cause and depends on the independent variable, uh, will be our y-axis value. So two quick examples here. So it says identify the explanatory and response variables. Uh, explanatory, I'm just going to underline once response variable twice within this particular scenario. So it says tra track athletes are timed to see how long it takes them to run one lap. Afterwards, their pulse rate is recorded. So I need to identify the two quantitative variables in here. And so the first thing that really happens is these track athletes are timed. So there's a quantitative variable, time, to see how long it takes them to run one lap. So time, try to make that look more like one underline here, uh, the time is the explanatory variable. It is the kind of the cause that's happening here. It's the independent variable. And it says afterwards, and that's your clue that the next thing they're going to talk about is the response variable, their pulse rate. And pulse rate would be a numerical quantitative variable. So time, how does that relate to what their pulse rate is going to be? And you would kind of think about here that uh, if you ran a faster time, then your pulse rate should be elevated. It should be higher. Your heart should be racing more if you ran a faster one lap time. The second problem, students are asked how many hours of sleep they got the night before a big test. 
Now, this one's a little bit more ambiguous. It doesn't really seem as easy as pointed out here as the uh, track athlete example, but you can kind of infer, like, what are they trying to hint at here? Well, they asked about hours of sleep, and then the night they before the big test. Well, if you took a big test, you're going to get a score on that big test. So to me, I kind of feel like they're wanting me to think about, do the number of hours of sleep you get the night before a big test Will that somehow be related to how well you do on that test? So we're going to see, and this is the next example we're going to look at specifically. So our hours of sleep is the explanatory variable. We're going to try to use that to see what kind of effect that it would have on test scores. Now, is it true that the more hours of sleep you get, the better your test score is? Maybe for some kids, maybe, maybe not. Some kids can get by on fewer hours of sleep. So that's the scenario we're going to look at in making a scatter plot. So I've got myself some axes already set up here. And I've got uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 students overall. And I've got their hours of sleep the night before. And I have their test scores on that big test the following day. So I need my hours of sleep. We said that was our explanatory variable. So that should go down on my x-axis. And test scores. I'm just going to write it this way because I don't have a lot of space here. Now, do I need to start at zero for hours of sleep and zero in terms of test scores? And you really don't have to. That's kind of the nice piece here about scatter plots. I don't have to start at zero. So, but if I looked at my hours of sleep, I do want to consider where's the minimum and the maximum. So I had one kid that got two hours of sleep was the minimum and nobody got over 10 hours of sleep, but this kid got nine hours of sleep. So, I mean, still, I could start this thing at two, and I could go up to nine quite easily and just count by one-hour increments. So let's say I start this at, and I could start here at two. I mean, I could really start at zero if I wanted to, uh, but then it, we'll get some kind of dead space, if you will. There'll be some space where there's going to be no data. So maybe I'll, I'll start here at two. And then here's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now, if you had enough space here, you could count by uh, half hour increments if you really wanted to. But I'll just kind of leave it at this. And if I wanted to, I could scoot this over, but I'll just leave it right here. All right, for test scores, let's see how we need to scale our axis. Uh, I definitely see there's a max of 100 here. What's the lowest test score? A 60. So... 60 to 100, maybe we count by fives. So maybe I'll have this start at 60, and then here's 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100. Nope, why did I write a nine? I don't know. There we go. So really, I'm only needing this much room of my graph here to make my scatter plot. And so you might have some extra dead space, but it's better to have extra dead space up and to the right. All right, so now we're just going to graph these like they're points, x, y coordinate points. So for eight hours of sleep, here's eight hours of sleep, I need to go up to a score of 85. And there's that student. Now, does it matter if this is the first student in this list of data? And do I need to label him as being the first student? No, I'm just going to graph these points. So then seven and a half be right in here with a score of 90. So there's the second student. Five comma 80 would be right here. Uh, 6, 85 would be right here. 2, 60. Ooh, this kid. Not so much sleep, not so much grade. Uh, three and a half, 70 would be right here. 9, 80. So notice the kid that got the most sleep didn't ace the test. Uh, six and a half hour kid, though. Man, I think he found that sweet spot. Six and a half hours. So every night before a big test, I, I feel like this one kid is showing you, you get six and a half hours of sleep, you're going to ace the test the next day. That's not true. Don't believe that. Uh, five comma 70. And seven comma 65 right here. So here's our scatter plot showing numbers of hours of sleep versus test scores. And in future videos, we're going to talk about particular patterns that we're going to see and things to comment on about this scatter plot. But really, this first video is just to get you comfortable with how to make a scatter plot, number one, by hand. But now I'm going to show you how to make that same scatter plot on your calculator. Now, again, this is only for people that have a TI-8384. 
if you have one of the inspires, you can do it, but it's not going to look exactly how I'm showing you here. So first thing you need to do is go to your stat button and we're going to select the first option that's already highlighted for us here, edit, and that'll take us to our lists. And in previous uh, chapters, we really just dealt with one list. But now that we have two quantitative variables, we're going to need two lists. So in list one, I put in all my hours of sleep, as you can see here. And you might say, but you only went up to nine. Why didn't you do the other three? Well, this could only show me so much on my calculator screen. So there really is these other three values down below the nine. And then in list two, I put in all my uh, matching hours, or not hours of sleep, my matching test scores. Now notice that the 8 and the 85, those are both across from each other. And that is important that the 8 and the 85 are directly in the same spot in your lists. So for example, if I accidentally left out this 70 and then this 80 was really right here for the three and a half hour kid, that's not right. And so you'll need to adjust your lists so that every number matches up going across in your list here. So once you've got your data in, the next thing we need to do is uh, you need to press the, your second button on the top left corner and the Y equals to get to your stat plot. Now stat plot is where we found box plots and histograms from last chapter. And so you need to go turn on one of your plots and maybe one of your plots is still on from a previous chapter. Uh, but now we need to select a scatter plot and it's typically going to be that first option. Okay, so select it, press enter to select it. And then it'll ask for an X list and a Y list. Well, this is going to be your explanatory and response variable list. And so by default, it automatically does list one and list two, which is perfect. That's what we had before. And then mark, this is what your scatter plot will be made up of. Either a, a larger square with a little smaller square dot inside of it, or do you want to see plus signs as your scatter plot, or do you want to see little teeny tiny dots? Um, it's personal preference what you want to use. Um, I just kind of leave it as the default, this first one. And then you want to press graph. Now, when you press graph, you might not see either one, any data points, or you might see only some of your data points. And I would say based on your data, based on these test score datas and being very large numbers, you probably aren't going to see anything. But what you need to do is after you press graph, go up to the top middle and press zoom and go down and select the zoom stat option. So this will go find all of the data in list one and list two. And you should get this. And so if I backtrack and look at my scatter plot I made by hand, does that look exactly like what the calculator gave me? And I won't say it looks exactly the same, but it looks pretty similar, right? Let me backtrack again here. Notice this shape, and then if I go this way, they kind of look similar. This one looks kind of more like it's dropped down more so than it does with the one that I did by hand. This one looks like it's kind of got a higher slope, if you will. These points are scooted up more so. Now, one thing I just want to let you know why there is a little bit of a difference is really, if I go look at my window for how the X min and max and what the scale is, Notice it said the minimum value was 1.3 and the max was 9.7 and it counted by fives for my number of hours of sleep. That's kind of weird because when I graphed it, uh, how did I graph it? I said the min was two and the max was nine and I counted by ones. My X scale was one. So how did they do test scores? Well, test scores is our Y. So they said the minimum test score is 53.2 and the maximum, they went all the way up to 106.8, and they counted by ones. But again, what did I do when I made mine by hand? I started at 60, went up to 100, and I counted by fives. So I made a much more realistic uh, x-axis and y-axis, right? The calculator really doesn't care. It doesn't know the context of the problem, and that test scores normally work well by fives, and number of hours of sleep maybe work well by one or by half hour increments. So just beware that whenever you look at a scatter plot, it's not going to be nice and lovely and be counting by a particular number. Because again, they counted by five hours of sleep. That seems weird. And then they counted by 1% at a time for the test scores, which again is kind of weird. 
Now, what I would what I would like you guys to do is either by hand or using your calculator, I would like you to make a scatter plot using this data. So we're looking at height and vertical leap. Now, I will say you do kind of need to think about what is the explanatory and what's the response variable. But I think if you kind of think about where I'm leading you to consider is, does a person's height really have an effect on how tall they, or how far they jump up in the air? And so the height is going to be your explanatory and the vertical should be your response variable. So again, I'll check this tomorrow in class and we'll discuss it. And that's all for video one.